Do you feel like you're missing out on something as a single person? In this episode, I'm going to show you the best way to thrive as a single person and finally start living the life you always wanted. <laughs> Hey there, my name is David, and if you're like me, then being single can be tough. You don't have someone to share your life with, and it feels like everyone else has it all figured out, no? But what if I told you that being single doesn't have to be so bad? That there is actually a lot of benefits to being an unattached? Well, today, I'm going to show you exactly how to thrive as a single person. You might feel as if you've been waiting far too long for ages and ages to meet your soulmate. You're doing anything but thriving as a single. Waiting can be hard. Yes, very, very hard. I know it. Waiting at times is so hard as a single person. Are you fed up with browsing through the hundreds of single profiles on your preferred dating site? Are you sick of spending your vacations alone? Are you still able to cheer for your friends at their wedding? Have you ever wondered if you're going to stay single until the end of your days? Have you asked the question, why them and not me? Waiting for your future husband or your future wife is difficult. There is no doubt about it. For some of us, the waiting seems endless. I have been there and I have wrestled often with these kinds of questions. And I have wondered if there is a purpose behind the waiting or if it's just waiting for the sake of waiting. As a person of faith, I wonder if God wants me for being single on purpose. Is he deliberately allowing the waiting for a greater purpose? Good question. Could it be that the waiting is amazing or is an amazing opportunity to live for something greater than myself? Don't waste your waiting period as a single. It's probably one of the most important pieces of advice that we can follow. And this advice hit me really hard. It hit me when I read a social media post that actually wasn't related to signals at all. Don't waste your waiting resonated strongly in my heart. And I have wasted my waiting. I have to say it. And one day it hit me. Oh no, I'm wasting my time. Big time. It came as a shock to me and I was indeed wasting my time. One stupid decision cost one precious year of my life and resulted in many headaches. It was when I realized and asked my question, why did I start dating that girl? Why did I do that? Such a stupid thing. I should have never asked her out. My emotional void had been too big to bear. And simply put, I was so tired of being single. And obviously my craving for love and being like everybody else overwhelmed me and finally made me gave in. I did like the girl though, but I was not really in love. It was just love to be with somebody. Well, the more time we'll spend together, my love will grow, I thought. Hmm, big mistake. No, it did not happen. I loved spending time with her. It was an amazing person, but I did not really love her from the bottom of my heart. It just never came. Rather, it was a rational love. You know, something that's right here in the head, coming from my head along with my desires to no longer be alone. Not a good combination, I can tell you, my friends. Needless to say, the relationship did not succeed. I had been wasting my waiting period and if you have done so welcome to the club welcome so glad that you are hanging around here makes me feel better and it will make you feel better and no honestly thank you for hanging out here we need each other we need to grow and we do miss up but the important thing is to keep going 
And I wish I had known then the six points I would like to share with you today. Because I would not repeat my mistakes again. Although the waiting is still hard at times. It's still very hard. But I know there is a way to thrive while being single. And it's certainly not by filling the void with a mediocre dating relationship. There is a better way, my friends. There's a better way to make the best use of your waiting today. The first thing I learned is focus on God. We read in the Bible, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him in Psalm 37 verse 7. There is a better way to live than just struggling to find a soulmate. Instead of focusing on finding the one, the psalmist tells us to focus on God. If you are following God, you have found your first love. Ta-da! You have found your first love. In other words, we often forget that we already have found the one. That's great news, isn't it? Because it proves that we are not alone. And God promises to give us everything we need. Wait on God and what's this other word? Wait patiently. Oh, how I love this word. I love it so much. No, I don't. <laughs> how can I wait patiently? This is so hard. If I'm approaching my 40s, how can I do that? Or even worse, if I'm approaching my 50s. Time is running out, isn't it? I still want to have kids. How can I not despair? I know that, especially for you ladies waiting in your 30s. This is so, so difficult. And let's, let's acknowledge that, that it is difficult. Your dream to have kids is often greater than for us men. I get your point. From a human perspective, it is extremely challenging to say the least to remain calm. But if God is in it, or if God allows the waiting, this shows that he has a higher purpose for your life. And I like Israel Newton's words and that have comforted me over and over again when I thought all hope was gone. I know it's darkest just before dawn. Might be the hardest season you experience. I know it hurts. Won't be too long. You're closer than you think you are. You're closer than you've been before. Look to the sky. Help is on the way. It's not over. It's not finished. And it's not ending. It's only the beginning. When God is in it, all things are new. What great words. And if God is in it, there is hope, even if we don't see it. I lift my eyes to the hill. This is what David wrote in one of his Psalms. From the, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. This leads us to number two, the second point, trust God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. This is the Apostle Paul, the author of the letter to the, to the Roman church, was convinced that all things would finally work together for good. All things includes your waiting period as a single person. Even if God allows more years of waiting than you had imagined, and he did in my life, definitely, God still has everything under control. He knows what he is doing. You can trust God. God's good is always better. This is what Lisa Turkost, I never know how to pronounce that name. Well, Lisa said, <laughs> God's good is always better. The waiting forces us to start believing that God has something better than we could have ever possibly dreamed in store. For us. I have concluded that I often underestimate God's goodness, not completely trusting him. I try to arrange whatever I can into what I think is good. But that's not a good strategy, my friends. Either it will fail 
completely or it will lead me to mediocre outcomes. I don't recommend it to you. And trust me, God has a purpose for both your single and your future married life. If you're going to marry, obviously, one day. The question is, do you believe it? And if you believe it, do you trust God? The third thing I learned is know that God is with you. The keeper of the prison paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's charge because the Lord was with him. And this is a passage I love so much in the Bible. And then we read, and whatever he did, the Lord made it succeed. This is, you can find in Genesis 39, 23. The Hebrew Joseph had to wait too for many, many years. And the author of Genesis tells us the story in the Old Testament. And I love this story. Because without doing any harm, his former master threw him into prison. Yeah. Imagine a foreigner with no rights in a dungeon in a foreign country. Not a good spot to be at. Humanly spoken, he did not have much hope to survive the prison and let alone find his soulmate. In the middle of all that, we learned that God was with him. Because when we read the passage, we tend to skip over that sentence. And chances are that you already know the outcome of this story. The happy end of the story. We have a greater perspective. And we know that there is a happy ending. But Joseph did not have this perspective. But he knew that God was with him in the difficult situation. To remind us of this truth, the narrator of Joseph's tale interviews that phrase and its variation a couple of times into the story so that we really get it. Hey guys, God is with you. Oh, if you don't have seen it yet. Well, actually, by the way, God is with you. Ha. Huh. Yeah. And if you don't feel it, no problem. But God is with you. He knew that we needed to hear it more than once so that this confidence would think deep, deep down into our hearts too. When I read the story, I get the impression that this phrase also concerned Joseph himself. Because I think he knew that his heavenly father was still with him despite the hardship he was facing. Probably over time, even through the waiting, Joseph's confidence probably decreased, but at the same time grew because he was reminded of this truth, you know. The fourth thing is choose to thrive. It's a decision, my friends. And I like the quote by Dale Carnegie that says, two men looked out of the prison bars. One saw the mud and the others saw the stars. Joseph put his eyes onto the Lord instead of staring at the prison bars. Might he have seen the stars behind? I don't know. But you have an important choice to make. Don't take it lightly. It's a choice between surviving and thriving. And this is the choice we need to make in our singleness. We can choose to see the stars in our singleness. But why is it that so many of us singles are desperately looking for our soulmate? Well, yeah, obviously we are made for relationships. Yeah, that's true. And having a desire to meet somebody is absolutely normal but can it be that you're just seeing the mud and are you settling on your disappointment joseph had many reasons to do so and instead he wholeheartedly served the keeper of the prison joseph refused to see the mud and this was a daily choice he had to do it over and over again and if you too want to thrive you have to choose the stars. You can't change your circumstances. We can't change our status. We can't, we can't say that tomorrow we're going to meet the person and then in six months we're going to be married. No, this is just not realistic. But what you can do is you can change your attitude. Have you ever considered that being single could be the opportunity of a lifetime? And the fifth thing I learned is prepare your future while waiting. Waiting is not always negative. Often God uses waiting periods to prepare us for the next season. He did it with Joseph in the prison. 
Moses spent 40 years in the desert before leading the Israelites. And Hannah was childless for many years before God granted her petition. After Samuel, Hannah's son anointed David as the new king. And the young David had to go back to tend his sheep for more than a decade. How crazy is that? They all waited. And their waiting seemed eternal. Yes, and it sometimes does. And still my waiting sometimes it seems never ending. But they did not waste their waiting. They let God change them. In the waiting, our attitude changes. And you know what? Waiting builds our character. There are many ways you can intentionally leverage your waiting. And I would like to suggest the one I feel is key. Use your time and energy to get closer to God. Put the energy you are spending browsing through the single profiles and all the dating platforms and the Facebook feeds and the Instagram feeds and TikTok and wherever you are. Or trying to get a date into a relationship with God. It's time well invested, my friends. And try to be happy right now because you can be happy. You can be happy. And the, you know, the day I closed down my profiles on various dating platforms, I immediately felt more fulfilled. Why? Because I spent more time reflecting on my life, reading the Bible and praying. And I felt that my relationship with my savior became more intimate. By the way, there is nothing wrong with dating sites. No, use them, use them, it's good. But they should not replace your relationship with God. And in my situation, I put much more hope into the dating site than I was in actually putting in God. It was a matter of balance. And that's why I feel, I feel so relieved now. And your investment in your relationship with God is the best preparation for your future. Why? Because of his intimate relationship with God, Joseph was able to serve the keeper of the prison and all of the other inmates. He was ready to make a difference in his world. He was ready. And the sixth thing I learned is make a difference. Be the change you want to see in the world, said Mahatma Gandhi. And this is so true. Be the change. You, and you can be the change you want to be. When you are thriving, you and the people around you will notice the change. Because if you're miserable and always desperate and looking for someone, you know what? You're not so inspiring. Yeah. I'd say like that. You're not so inspiring. But you will be different if you thrive. If you learn to be happy and content right now. Because above all, you will have a different attitude. And you will feel fulfilled. When you're thriving, you're ready to make a difference. In the survival mode, not so much. You focus on your own needs and desires only. You know, serving others is so much better and to live for a higher purpose. Notice this important point. Joseph started to make a difference while being in prison and he did not wait until the Pharaoh promoted him. Instead of waiting for your relationship status and social media and, uh, to change, start being the change in your world right now. Use your time, ideas and energy and talents to serve in your community. Be the difference. Be it, live it, invest in your learning. Actually, yeah, learning new things as well, new skills. And why not organizing a mission trip overseas? As you may be able to live with less income, why not work part-time to volunteer at your church or for your preferred charity? Or why not open a prayer group at work or offer workshops with your extra time instead of wasting your time watching hours of Netflix series or scrolling up and down through your social media newsfeed until your thumb just flips off. No, there's a better way, my friends. There is a better way. Let's be this change together. And the possibilities to make a difference are endless. Use your creativity. Could it be that you are single for a purpose? And if this is the case, why not become a single with purpose? As a single, you have an amazing opportunity indeed, and you can leverage this season to make a bigger difference. And that's so much on my heart, and there will be future videos on that topic. You know, we can make, we can change our world. And this is 
So true. We just have to, 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 to know that and realize that we can do that. And it's an opportunity to skyrocket your skill set, to invest much energy and time and to travel to places you're dreaming of visiting. How amazing is that? And spend your precious time for God and with God and for His glory. So it's time to begin to thrive as a single. It's time to change your attitude, trust God and start making a difference for Him to give Him all the glory. Now is the time to become a purposeful single. Choose to thrive as a Christian single, as a single woman or a single man today. And don't waste your waiting period as a single. If you waste your waiting, you will miss out on an amazing opportunity. So are you taking up the challenge? I hope so. I hope you do. It's going to be amazing. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. And you will find a link to get a free preview of my book, Single for a Season, in the show notes. Thanks so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.